Hey everyone, Tio here, back again this time for the full review of the Dell U27 22DE monitor from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does digital art, graphic design, edits photos and videos on a daily basis. First of all, big thanks to Dell Singapore for providing me with this review unit, which I have to return after this review, and big thanks to you guys who sent me questions in the unboxing video, which I'm going to answer in this video. All right, um, before I start, if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. Everything that's in this video will be in the text review as well. Link in the video description below. This monitor looks beautiful. The design is very clean and simple. I didn't even notice the Dell logo uh, is here until someone pointed it out to me. So the bezel is very thin, about six millimeter, and it's uniform throughout. This is like five times thinner compared to the monitor that I have here. And because of the thinner bezels, uh, everything looks very immersive. And one thing I really like about this is the LCD is flush to the bezels, which is flush to the exterior housing. So this whole part here is just flat. I like the stand because it does not take up a lot of space on my table. And this silver and black color combination, I think it looks really good. And the colors out of the box, they look terrific. However, for my work, I do need to calibrate this monitor myself so that the colors will match on my other monitors as well as on my laptop. So after calibrating it using the Spider 5 Pro Color Calibrator, I measured color support for 100% sRGB. 94% P3, 86% Adobe RGB, and 84% NTSC. So the color accuracy for this monitor is quite good. By the way, Dell U series monitors are 100% sRGB monitors. So for sRGB monitors, usually the Adobe RGB support will be under 80%. So for this monitor to have over 80% Adobe RGB, or specifically 86% Adobe RGB color support, it's actually really good. So this monitor is definitely suitable, uh, in my opinion, for print designers, unless you really need your colors to be extremely accurate, in which case then you should go for the Dell UP series monitor, which is going to be more expensive. There is no mention on Dell's website whether this is an 8-bit with FRC or 10-bit monitor. Now here I've tried to create a gradient with a file that has 16 bits per channel and this gradient it looks smooth to me without vertical bending. So let me try and create the black gradient on this side and this looks alright as well. From macOS system information, it mentions here that the frame buffer depth is 30-bit color. So this suggests to me that this monitor is 10-bit. The maximum brightness of this monitor is rated at 500 nits. I measured 299 nits using the color calibrator and currently I'm running the monitor at 64% brightness. So this is a very bright monitor, but it doesn't have HDR. So when it comes to color support, this monitor is definitely more than suitable for graphic design work, for web design, for work where uh, most of your work will appear online, or even for print design because it can go up to 86% Adobe RGB. So what I usually do um, is to scan my watercolor art and try to color correct it so that it can match the original and here um, it seems like the digital scan actually looks better compared to the original mostly because this is brighter and this white is more white the paper is actually off white now the colors are definitely quite vibrant yeah definitely slightly more vibrant compared to the original on paper again mostly because this is brighter this is another sketch. Um, yeah, the colors look lovely. And when I zoom in, I can see um, all sorts of details. 
So the resolution on this monitor is 2560 by 1440. You are going to see some pixelations uh, with the user interface elements. Um, but 1440p resolution to me is very usable. In fact, the monitor that you see on the side here, um, it's also a 27 inch 1440p resolution monitor that I've been using for about five, four or five years. Yeah. Anyway, when it comes to zooming in into your art, you are not going to see pixelation. Although if you want higher resolution monitors, you can go for 4K resolution, but that of course is going to be more expensive. So 1440p resolution on a 27 inch monitor, I think it's a good combination in terms of value for money. So as I move around, yep, I can see a lot of details, but I do not notice pixelation until I look at the palettes here, the fonts, the user interface elements. When it comes to print design, um, this monitor size, again, it's really good. So this is A4 size. You can place two A4 size paper on the display and still have space for the palettes. So let's say you are designing a page that is A3 in size. You will be able to see the actual page at 100% zoom at 100% the size, the actual size. And you will be able to see the fonts at the actual size that they are going to be printed. So it makes it really easy to check the legibility of the fonts to see whether or not they are big enough to be read. So that is quite helpful because if you are using a smaller monitor, for example, you would have to zoom in. And sometimes the scaling uh, may not give you the true uh, representation of how the art is going to be printed on paper. So when you are able to view the work at 100% size, uh, the same size as it's going to be printed, it's really helpful and improves productivity because you don't have to zoom in and out. For photo editing, definitely no problems. I've used 4K monitors before and you are going to see more information because there are more pixels. Um, but I have to emphasize that 1440p is very usable. So this photo is a bit blur. But the colors look great. This is video editing and this video is for the unboxing video. Um, this software is Final Cut Pro on Mac OS and here I'm able to fit the list of projects on the side, show the thumbnails, show the player, have this palette here and show the timeline. So yep, I have enough resolution to show all the things that I want to show and again the resolution uh, seems good enough for me now if you want to edit HDR content uh, this monitor obviously is not going to be suitable because there is no HDR but for 4k video editing uh, Definitely no problem at all. Just that you won't be able to view your 4K files at actual 4K because this is not 4K. I mean, this monitor is not 4K resolution. But I've been editing a lot of videos on this monitor and it's very satisfactory. Let me show you the OSD. So there is a directional toggle behind with a built-in press button. So once you press the button, you get this shortcut that you can program yourself. And if you need the full set of menu, um, it's available here. So you can change the brightness contrast, input source. Input source is automatically detected when you connect something, when you connect a new uh, connection. You can change uh, different color presets. I have this at custom color, by the way. There is picture in picture and picture by picture mode. Uh, this monitor actually supports a lot of picture by picture um, orientation or layouts. 
And USB is actually important because you will need to set the settings here in order for the KVM switch to work properly. And unfortunately for me, it's a bit confusing. So once I set the USB selection here properly, I will not want to switch it around. But with some trial and error, you will be able to do it. Let's take a look at the ports. So Dell has included these two rubber inserts to prevent you from connecting your video cable accidentally to these two ports here. This is a display port. This is a USB Type-C port. These two ports do not accept video input. To get video, you have to use this full-size HDMI port version 1.4, full-size display port version 1.4 with HDCP 1.4, and this USB Type-C port, which can also accept video input, and this also has 90 watt power delivery. So this is the one to connect to if you want to charge your laptop or your tablet, or to get, of course, video signal. Now this display port here is full size. This is a downstream port. So if you connect um, your computer to this port, you are not going to get video on the monitor. Same applies to this USB type C port. This is for data transfer only. And this is not going to charge your tablet. All these USB ports, um, they are version 3.2 gen 2, so transfer speeds fantastic really fast now this 3.5 millimeter audio jack um, this does not work with wired earphones or earbuds it's specifically mentioned in the Dell manual actually so if you connect your earphones to this or your speakers to this you may or may not be able to adjust the volume yeah so I connected this to my earphones and I wasn't able to get any audio. This is why you may want to buy this monitor. This is the RJ45 Ethernet port with transfer speeds up to 1000 megabits per second. So the transfer speed is incredibly fast. The thing is I wasn't able to max out the speed because the internet plan that I signed up with my ISP only goes up to 300 megabits per second but even at 300 megabits per second that is significantly faster compared to the Wi-Fi that I get from the router. So when I connected the ethernet cable from the router directly to this monitor, I was able to max out the speed of my internet plan at 300 megabits per second. But if your internet plan is much faster, then you can expect to go all the way up to 1000 megabits per second, which is incredibly fast. Other features for this ethernet port includes MAC address pass through, there is actually a permanent MAC address printed on the back of the monitor and that's the MAC address you will get when you connect this monitor to Windows or Mac OS. There is PXE boot and WIC on LAN. Now if you do not need Ethernet port then you can actually save some money just by going with other Dell monitors that do not have this port. At the time of this review, the, this monitor, this U2722DE, it's priced at 879 Singapore dollars. The model without the Ethernet, that's U2722D, that is 130 Singapore dollars cheaper. Once you connect this to your router, you can get internet through any of these USB ports. And now let's talk about daisy chaining monitors. So daisy chain only works with display port. You cannot use HDMI to daisy chain monitors. And daisy chain works with Windows, not on Mac OS. Currently I have the MacBook Pro connected directly to the Dell monitor using display port and the Dell monitor to the BenQ monitor using display port. And as you can see, these two monitors, they are showing the same content. They are basically in mirror mode. 
I wasn't able to get the two monitor to go into extended desktop mode using the display system preferences with Mac OS. All right, let me switch over to Windows. By the way, that's the sound of the thunder. It's raining very heavily outside. So this is the same setup again, this time running Windows OS. So now the daisy chain monitors are showing different content. So this is basically in extended desktop mode. Currently, I have two video input sources to this monitor to show you the picture by picture feature. There is also picture in picture where you can see the whole desktop and get a small insert for the second video input signal. So on the left side, we have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus connected to the USB-C port that has 90 watt power delivery and video input. And on the right side, this is connected to the Mac Mini using HDMI. And I have connected an additional USB cable to the USB-C port for data transfer, basically to turn this monitor into a USB hub. All right, here's something very important to know about the USB Type-C ports on this monitor. There are three, but only one can accept video input. So if I connect my Mac Mini to the USB-C video input port, then I will not be able to connect my tablet to the monitor because there's only one USB-C video input port. And if I want to connect a laptop with USB-C only, um, I won't be able to do that as well unless I connect an adapter, USB-C to HDMI and then to this monitor. So my recommendation is, well, this uh, connect using HDMI or display port and leave the USB-C uh, video port free so that you can get video and power. For power delivery, the monitor can charge the laptop at its rated power. So 45 at 45 watts, 65 at 65, 90 at 90. For 130 watt laptops, I'm not sure if you can charge those laptops, um, maybe slowly. If you are using Windows and multiple compatible monitors, there is actually this Dell Manager software that you can install to help you arrange the layout for all those virtual desktops. With Windows, there is also this feature called Multi-Monitor Sync. So this can be used when you daisy chain monitors using DisplayPort. When you change the settings for one monitor, for example, brightness or contrast, that settings will be reflected in the connected monitor as well. So it's quite convenient. KVM switch feature is quite easy to use after you have set it up. So if KVM is not working as expected, you actually have to go into the OSD here to uh, play around with the USB settings. So I have already set up KVM. So currently I have the cursor on the right side and I can click the shortcut here for USB switch. And you can see there's this pop up there and now the cursor is on this side and let me switch again you see this pop up and now the cursor is back so this will apply to keyboards as well now i actually have a keyboard and mouse that can switch between computers using bluetooth and um, the usb receiver you see this one two three so i actually prefer to use this uh, to switch between computers rather than using the KVM switch. The KVM switch will be useful for people with a uh, wired connection like wired keyboards or wired mouse. All right, let's answer some questions from you guys from the unboxing video. Can you cover the auto KVM feature? So I just did that. You can connect two computers to this monitor and use one set of keyboard and mouse and the switching process is very simple. Just use the OSD uh, here to switch. Um, takes two clicks to switch. Can I download the photo on your desktop? Um, yes, the link is here. What do you think is sharper? Uh, or have better performance on Mac OS uh, 27 inch 1440p versus 27 inch 4K. If you are using Mac OS 
the best size and resolution combination is actually 27 inch 1440p or 27 inch 5k i don't really recommend 27 inch 4k for graphic design work because certain graphic design software has issues of scaling the files but if you are not into graphic design then by all means go ahead but i do recommend for 4k resolution monitors get at least 32 inch but even at 32 inch and 4k it's not the best combination for mac os because at 100 percent um scaling which is basically means uh, no scaling uh, the user interface elements like the menus the icons can be a bit small so just remember for mac os best combination is 27 inch 1440p or 5k resolution have you found if the monitor has any weaknesses um, the main downside for this monitor um, to me would probably be the backlight glow but that is a small issue to me unless i am watching like movies every night in a dark room uh, for general usage the backlight glow um, i don't really see that um, with general usage such as now for example with this monitor in this lit room but backlight glow does um, irritate some people i guess i'm not that fussy why do you recommend connecting the monitor via hdmi and not display port um, both work fine there is no advantage to connecting uh, to hdmi or display port just remember that um, if you connect using HDMI or DisplayPort, you will free up the USB-C with 90 watt power delivery. So that is going to be quite useful. Uh, I've seen your review on the BenQ. The specifications are good, but um, the energy consumption is also high. And here it says that that's why you cannot buy a new monitor. Your energy bill takes up all your money this is not true because um, i recently repaired the banq monitor for 80 singapore dollars the alternative is to spend 500 over dollars to buy a new monitor so by not buying a new monitor i actually save like a lot of money up front today yep so i try to use um things that I have until they can no longer be used so as to well save money and I have some calculations here to tell you exactly how much money you can save by not buying a new monitor by not spending extra money to buy a new monitor when you can repair an old one okay do you have a MacBook I'm curious how well this monitor works as a docking station with KVM and daisy chain so KVM works well but for daisy chain um it's not going to work well basically your external monitors will just show the same thing it's just a mirror mode for all your external monitors i have a question regarding ethernet port does it connect to both upstream devices like a router or is it only available for one device so the ethernet port is really for you to get internet onto the monitor and then you can get internet through the USB ports. You are not going to be able to connect, let's say, um, a server uh, or NAS to this monitor. I want to order the Dell um, 22, sorry, 2722DE, and the website only has 2722D. There are two morning, sorry, there are two models for this monitor. One is the DE. E means Ethernet and D means D without the E means it has no Ethernet. And this is going to be cheaper. So if you do not need Ethernet, you can save money by going for the one without Ethernet. Actually, um, if you really want a monitor that is value for money, go with the U2722D, a 25-inch monitor with USB-C 90 watt power delivery it's going to be smaller 25 inch versus 27 inch but that monitor is significantly cheaper but that monitor is an sRGB monitor but colors are still uh, pretty good so does the 90 watt 
USB-C port automatically adjusts the power output to adapt to different laptops charging watt. Yes, it does. So it will not overcharge or undercharge your uh, laptop. Basically, it will adjust to charge your laptop at the rated power that your laptop should charge at. Do you also want to test the monitor with AutoCAD? Um, I don't use AutoCAD. Anyway, this monitor with 1440p resolution, this is a very usable resolution. So I am very sure that it will have no problem handling AutoCAD. I understand that this monitor has 500 nits brightness as opposed to other monitors with 350 nits. Um, is the higher nits necessary? In the real world, if a monitor is rated at 350 nits, um, the maximum brightness could be around 250 um, plus or minus 50 nits. Yes, the range is quite huge. Um, at 250 nits, the monitor is still very bright because chances are you are not going to run the monitor at maximum brightness. It's going to be way too bright, way too uncomfortable and bad for your eyes. What's the difference between this and the previous model, the U2721DE? Um, this I do not know. <laughs> unfortunately because I did not compare the two monitors but the thing with Dell monitors is um, they will just keep uh, updating the monitor sometimes they just update the name without significant changes to the features or sometimes they just update the design so you can actually go with the previous model if you can find it at a good price what's the difference between uh, you um, U2722DE and U2722Q. All right, um, all these letters, they actually have some meaning. U, if I remember correctly, means ultra sharp. Basically, it's to represent the uh, 100% sRGB monitors from Dell. So if you want Adobe RGB monitor, you should go for UP. If you want general use monitor with good colors, go for U, which is going to be cheaper. D, um, I'm not sure what D actually means actually. Um, e means Ethernet, Q means QHD resolution. All right, to conclude, this monitor looks good. It performs well. It has a lot of features and it has Ethernet. So in terms of value for money, if you need and actually use all those features, I do think it's worth the money. However, if you don't need all those features you can go with other Dell monitors that are going to be like significantly cheaper I'm sure you can find one that suits your need because Dell they make like a lot of monitors all right for issues um, backlight with this particular unit there is backlight glow at the bottom left and right backlight glow can be um, specific to specific units so um, other units could have backlight glow at different places Anyway, um, I don't find backlight glow to be a problem, at least since I don't use this monitor to watch that many movies at night. I use this only for graphic design work, for visual content creation. I don't notice the backlight uh, glow when I'm using the monitor, for example, like this. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions, do let me know in the comment section below. Bye!